These speakers are crazy good looking. They're crazy good sounding and they're crazy cheap right now because they're on sale. As audiophiles, we want to listen to our music as much as possible. When you're outside, on the porch, poolside, campsite, fireside, you can't bring your stereo with you. Or can we? That's why you need to get one of these. Oh, it's so cool. This is the sound core boom too. It's got 24 hours of battery life. Is 2.1, which means it has a subwoofer inside, has 60 watts, and if you hit the bass boost, it's got 80 watts. It's February, and I'm in a pool. You can hook it up to the Soundcore app, which has a nine band EQ. You can hook up two of them in stereo or up to a hundred, and of course, 100% waterproof, and it floats. Soundcore Boom 2 has bass up 2.0 technology. And this is what it sounds like playing royalty free music. And I am not messing with that audio at all. This is the most bass I've ever heard come out of a package this small. This is unmatched, under $200. You get two tweeters and a woofer with an active crossover to make sure you get the best sound. Two passive radiators with cool LEDs on them. 24 hour playtime, integrated handle, and this thing's actually a power bank so you can charge your other devices off of this thing. Just make sure you put this back when you throw it in the pool. And it has PartyCast 2.0. You can hook up a hundred of these and TWS pairing for a stereo experience. So please check out the link in the description. Go check out the Soundcore Boom 2 because this thing is incredible. Your kids are gonna love it. You're gonna love it. This thing is bananas. These are the Aperion Novus floor standing speakers. There's two versions. There's one with two six and a half inch woofers and there's one with two five and a quarter inch woofers. I have the one that has two five and a quarter inch woofers. In the past, I had the one that had two six and a half inch woofers and it was a brilliant sounding speaker. Aperion Audio is one of the OGs when it comes to direct to customer sales and they've been around for over 20 years. Kind of blows me away. I read somewhere that The Wonder Years, the TV show, it was made in the 80s and took place in the 60s. So if they made that show today, it would take place in like 2003, which is really depressing or exciting, depending on the way you look at it. These speakers come in white or they come in black and they're not glossy finished. They have a ton of paint on them. As far as like layers, I think they have like 14 coats. And if I'm looking closely, the finish on these speakers is eerily similar to those from a Bucard speaker. Let's talk about the specs. Well, the most important spec that I'm looking at today is the price. These are $419.40, so let's just say $420. So $840 for a pair. Their regular price is $699. So their regular price was $1,400. So we're going from $1,400 down to 840 and that's a pretty significant savings if they're worth it the one complaint i had about the novus the one with the two six and a half inch woofers was i thought it was just too expensive well guess what that argument that obstacle is taken off the table with the five and a quarter inch version reported frequency at negative three db which is not very far down and reported frequency response is just how far the speaker goes or how low it can play and how high it can play Sometimes manufacturers, especially on the low end, get a little bit liberal with their claims. Now there are two types of measurement. There's anechoic, which means it's kind of in a soundproof booth, and then there's in room. 
In room, you get a higher level of bass because you have boundary reinforcement. Think speaker in front of wall. When that speaker plays bass notes, bass notes rotate in 360 degrees. Some of it hits that wall behind your speaker and then again gets pushed forward. So you'll actually get what's called a bass lift from what's called room gain. So when you're looking at specs, mm, they're there for entertainment purposes only. I don't think these would be getting to 36 anechoically, that doesn't mean they don't sound awesome and pack a huge punch when it comes to the bass department. Four ohm impedance, which means these are a little bit harder to drive. So you wanna make sure your home theater receiver or your amplifier can handle a four ohm load. 88 dB sensitivity, that just means how loud this speaker plays at one given watt at one meter. 88 is good. So even if you have a 50 watt receiver, if it can handle four ohm loads, it's gonna be able to drive these speakers just fine. The high frequencies are being handled by one one inch silk dome tweeter with ferro fluid. It's a good tweeter. All of their speakers, all the Nova speakers, really good on the top end. For the woofers, you have two five and a quarter inch aramid fiber cone woofers. The configuration is a two way or MTM mid tweeter mid enclosure type very good anti-resonant internally braced front ported and the front port is a little bit different it's a vertical slot port with a bit of a bevel coming out of it very striking to look at how it affects the performance i don't know because i didn't ask the cool thing about Aperion Audio though is if you do want to talk to a person, you can call them and you will legitimately talk to a human being, not an AI bot. You don't have to chat with a machine. You can talk to a person with a nervous system and a pair of ears and a mouth. They're seven inches wide by 37 inches high by eight points, let's just call it nine inches deep. 36 pounds a piece. They also have one interesting other feature and that's a treble mod. So on the back there's a little jumper. If it's too spicy for you, if it's a little bit too exciting on top, just pull the jumper. Pull the ripcord. Jump away from the high treble insanity. Just kidding. I don't think they sound bad at all. I don't think these sound lifted, but if you want to reduce the top end a little bit, just pull the jumper, put it into a baggie and put it in your junk drawer so you don't lose it. With just a pair of five and a quarter inch woofers, you might think that these aren't going to put out enough bass for you. I would say that you are wrong. These hit you. Mm, I don't know. They hit like a roughneck, which is a term for somebody that works in the oil field. They hit you like a roughneck who just found out that his wife is cheating on him with a banker that has a master's degree out in West Texas. And he's angry. That's what this hit hits like. It's going to hit you hard. Even though these are hard hitting though, doesn't mean that they're not controlled and quick. With the five and a quarter inch woofers, I think this thing is very articulate on the bottom. Slipknot, the heretic anthem, fantastic song. And if you listen to that song initially, you might, because there's a reoccurring line in the song that says, if you're five, 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 then I'm six, six, six. It's not about the devil. This song is not about the devil. This song is about I'm different from you. Basically, he's not the same as everybody else and talks about a lot of internal struggles. Anyway, that song is very intense, but there is a basically 16th notes on the bass drum. It says four hits for every beat. This is, this is a whole note. One, two, three, four. This is an eighth note. One and two and three and four and. This is a 16th note. 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a... It's very fast. On some speakers, especially speakers that don't have fast bass, those just kind of meld together. Not on the Aperion Novus five and a quarter inch floor standing speaker. <laughs> yeah, you could hear it. You could hear the texture of the bass drum too. Very impressive. You want to slow it down a little bit? A little Miles Davis, so what? Airy in the bass. That's right, I said airy in the bass. Punch is hard, is articulate, is fast. What more can you ask from a speaker of this price? Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range, last night I was listening to Hello by Adele, some of the um, other, my some of my favorite songs from Adele. Listening to them through my AirPod 2s, which are actually great, AirPod Pros, fantastic. Actually, these do come in gloss black, anyway. Pure white though, the ones that I have. 
419.40. Oh, and those are in stock. So it looks like the gloss black is the one that's low stock. Pure white. So they may be like blowing these out. They may not be coming back. So if you want to take, here's the spoiler alert. They're absolutely 100% worth it. But listen to the end of the video because there's some things about this speaker that you may not like. It might not check the box for you personally. So listening to Adele on these speakers, her voice maybe doesn't have the utmost the finite air and articulation that I hear from other speakers. The good thing about that is generally when I hear that from other speakers, the top of the mid-range may have, I don't know, a pop in there, a little bit of whoop, a little wave. Not a good wave that you're surfing on, a wave that causes hearing <coughs> fatigue, ear, ear fatigue, hearing fatigue. Basically, when you listen to a speaker for too long, your ears hurt, okay? They, why they call it fatigue, I don't know. They should just call it ear hurt part of the frequency response. Anyway, I think there's a bit of a dip around the upper mid-range, and that's fine by me, because when you wanna push them, get them super loud, above 90 dB or so, you're not gonna have that fingers on the chalkboard, upper mid-range, lean in forward. MTV Unplugged, Nirvana, dumb. If you listen to that song initially, and I think they tweaked the mics, Kurt Cobain was really stepped back in the mix. So they didn't have him forward in the mix. He was sitting forward, but they didn't have him recorded. As that record goes on, they kind of tweak the levels and he comes forward a little bit. I would say this doesn't push him back too far. Male vocals, I think, are actually a little bit more in line. So I think the dip is happening probably closer to the treble with female vocals. Male vocals, fine, if not a little bit rich. By memory, the six and a half inch woofers had so much bass that I felt like some of it was almost bleeding into the mids. These, to me, the five and a quarter inch version, more articulate. Frankly, if I was choosing between the two, I would buy the five and a quarter inch version simply because I think the bass is a little bit more well behaved than the six and a half inch version. It's one thing about speakers. You can't just think, well, this is the same family. I'll just get the bigger one because the bigger one oftentimes has a little bit sloppier bass. Painting with broad strokes here, but that's been my experience on a lot of speakers. Anyway, mid-range, a little bit scooped out in the upper mid-range. Female vocals, a little bit stepped back. Male vocals, I think, are right in line. A little bit warm, a little bit caramelly. Let's talk about treble. Movie trivia, that's something we're doing every video now. It's a little fun thing we do. Okay, Aperion is from Oregon. There is also a mecca of 80s movies shot on location in Astoria, Oregon. Now, most of us probably know the most famous movie that was shot in Astoria, Oregon, and that was The Goonies. What other two movies were shot in Astoria around the same time, within years of one another, in Oregon? Two other movies shot in Astoria, Oregon, and you cannot, this is the 80s too, you cannot Google it. So put it in the comments. What other two movies were shot in Astoria, Oregon? Thank you. <laughs> Treble, oh boy. Silk tweeter, or soft dome tweeter, okay? Here's what I love about these speakers. Listen, listen to me. They have a soft dome tweeter, which in my opinion, sounds way more natural than an aluminum dome, than a titanium dome, and even some folded ribbon tweeters. Even though I love folded ribbon tweeters for their air, their extension, their clarity, they don't always sound completely natural. A little bit cool, which is fine by me. Anyway, with this soft dome tweeter, you're getting some characteristics of a folded ribbon tweeter. You're getting an incredible amount of clarity into the top end. Santa Monica by Everclear. There's a re-recorded version, which is really amazing. Anyway, when that song gets really going, there's just cymbal crash after cymbal crash after cymbal crash. Now, to the uninitiated and to somebody that doesn't have a super resolving stereo system, all those cymbals sound exactly the same. But if you have a very revealing system, you can lean in and you can start to hear actually the different hits on the cymbal. I mean, he's still hitting them on beat, but you can hear how effective or how different each hit is. And I did hear that on the Imperian Novus. I had these running off of the Pioneer 
BLX LX305. I think I got that model number right. And then also ran them off the Rotel A11 Mark II, which is uh, 60 watts into 8 ohms. I think it's pushing probably 70 or 80 watts into 4 ohms. Anyway, the Rotel, brilliant combination. Because the Apirin Audio has a little bit more punch, I thought it was a very good pairing. The Pioneer, great pairing, but you can also do all sorts of DSP, so you can figure out how to get the Pioneer to sound exactly the way you want to with the Apirin Novus floor standing speakers. But Treble, I think, is amazing because you're getting the resolution that you'll get from a folded ribbon with the natural sound you get from a soft dome. Real, real nice. What are my final thoughts? This was a speaker that my wife put her stamp of approval on, not because of how it sounded, but because of how it looked. With the grills off, looked super sleek in our living room, looks super sleek in our living room right now. If you notice on some of the B-roll, or as I, I do D-roll because it's so bad. It's like two steps down from B-roll. Anyway, you'll notice there's a pair of CSS Tories, the book, the floor standards, sorry, sitting right next to the Aperion Novus speakers. We'll get into that comparison in the next video. We're also going to compare the Q Acoustics 5040, which again is an MTM driver, basically woofer, tweeter, woofer, about the same size, and they're both five and a quarter inch or five inch drivers. That speaker's coming in at $1,500 a pair. So you have the Novus coming in at just north of half the price of the Q Acoustics. Make sure you subscribe, like this video. Final thoughts. Um, I think they're great, especially at this price. Phenomenal, $800, you're getting direct to customer pricing now. I, didn't, I never really felt that their pricing was ever direct to customer before. I mean like the level, like I didn't feel like I was saving any money. But when I look at these and I have my conspiracy brain going, uh, maybe they're coming out of the same place that Bucard comes out of. And I also think Arendal might be because they have that similar finish. I could be totally wrong. But if they are coming out of the same place that makes Bucard and Arendal, those are both top tier brands mid-tier, I don't know what you'd call them. Anyway, they're top tier to me. So we have an excellent build quality. We have an excellent sound or sound signature that I like. That sound signature is punchy, sparkly, a little bit of dip in the upper mid-range. And if that's your jam, these speakers you should take a look at if you're in the market. And at less than $1,000, a fairly small footprint and a speaker that's versatile because it's not gonna overwhelm a medium-sized room but they also play big enough that you can put them in a large room. I think this is kind of the sweet spot for a floor standing speaker for most people in most situations. They sound stage great. They do have that treble jumper. So if you want to, I don't know, calm down that top end, you have to, but I don't want to calm down the top end. I think it's great just the way it is. So if you like the looks and you like that sound characteristic, you're definitely going to like the price. Less than $1,000. Very high quality speaker. I love them. I love them. At this price, nine out of 10. Um, check out the link in the description. That will be an affiliate link, which means if you click and you buy, I get a little bit of money from that transaction. And that's how I make videos. I do this for a living now. So if you want to support the channel and you're in the market for this speaker, please use the links in the description. If you want to support the channel and you don't want to buy this speaker, but you have to buy toilet paper, maybe click through one of my Amazon links. Because even if you buy toilet paper, I still get a commission off that. You can also buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Click on it. Throw me a couple of bucks. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything. Also, check out my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. The best hi-fi community out there. What else? You can also try out Amazon Music Title. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you buy the Aperion Novus floor standing speaker and you're watching something real, real cool. By the way, I saw Dune 2 on my birthday on Thursday. Fantastic movie. Binge listen through your new Aperion Novus floor standers and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.